Imagine a substance from which you can build a house and insulate piping, valves and gaskets. Can be used in heaters, meter boards, protective clothing and a range of domestic appliances such as coffee pots, popcorn poppers, crock pots and even to carry drinking water. And which is natural, light, cheap and easy to source, is waterproof, is stronger than steel and resistant to chemicals, will not carry an electric current and can withstand very high temperatures because it does not burn. Sounds too good to be true. Well, it is, and you've also probably heard of it before. Its name is asbestos. Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral that's mined from the ground and was used in many buildings and other products in Australia. It is still mined and used in some countries. From the 1920s to the late 1980s, Australia was one of the world's biggest users of asbestos, and it can be found in many buildings and infrastructure constructed during that time. If a house, building or infrastructure was built or renovated before 1990, it is likely that it has asbestos products in it. Asbestos was used in over 3,000 products, including fencing, roofing, flooring, paint, walls, fire protection around fireplaces and stoves, and water pipes. The list goes on and on. And on and on. In fact, its use was so widespread, it's estimated that more than a million Australian homes and workplaces were built from asbestos sheeting. Even more contain other asbestos-containing materials. But along with its common use, it slowly became apparent that there were significant health risks connected to it. So much so that in the late 1980s, it was banned from building materials, and in 2003, Australia introduced a complete ban on the importation of and use of all asbestos-containing products. This was an enormous but overdue step in the right direction for public health. However, because its use is not banned in all countries, asbestos-containing materials have continued to find their way into Australia. So, what does this all mean? Let's start with health, important to all of us. Asbestos can be highly dangerous to health. It's made of microscopic fibres that can be 50 to 200 times thinner than a human hair, and you cannot see, smell or taste asbestos, which makes it a hidden danger. These fibres can be easily breathed in, become trapped in the lungs and cause disease, including terminal cancer. Mesothelioma is the most known of these, but asbestos can cause various cancers, including lung and throat cancer. It can also cause asbestosis, long-term inflammation and scarring of the lungs, which makes you struggle for air. Some of these diseases, like mesothelioma and asbestosis, have no known cure and some develop decades after exposure. On average, one person passes away every 12 hours in Australia from mesothelioma, and it is estimated over 4,000 people die from the effects of asbestos each year. As the National Health and Medical Research Council has noted, asbestos is a highly toxic, insidious and environmentally persistent material that has killed thousands of Australians and will kill thousands more this century. So it's clear that asbestos is toxic and no one would want to be exposed to it. And its use has been banned since 2003. So what's the worry? Although no longer used, the problem is there is still so much of it around from before the ban in our homes, our offices, our shops, our factories and our work sites. And it is exposure to this pre-existing asbestos that is causing what's known as our third wave of asbestos-related disease. It was asbestos industry workers and their families in mining and manufacturing then builders and other tradies who used the products who bore the brunt of the first and second waves. Now tradies and homeowners are at a risk of a third wave from unsafe practices during construction or demolition work. Like Peter Rafferty, 
He was seven when he helped his grandma pull down their old fibro chicken run. In his 20s, he worked for a short time on a construction site where there were asbestos-containing materials. Married and with three boys, Pete was 45 years of age when he was diagnosed with mesothelioma and given only nine months to live. He passed away in July 2017, only a couple of weeks after his 47th birthday. Pete would probably still be alive today if he'd known about the dangers of asbestos. Asbestos poses a risk to health when its fibres are either breathed in or swallowed. Breathing in fibres is the main risk. If asbestos-containing material is in good condition and left undisturbed, it is relatively safe and, if people are careful and don't disturb it, the fibres will remain bound in the material it's used in. But if the material is damaged or crumbling because what's holding it together is disintegrating, known as friable asbestos, or it's disturbed by breaking, cutting, drilling or sanding, the fibres are released into the air. From there, it can be inhaled and be a risk to your health and to the health of those around you who are breathing in the same toxic air. There is no known safe level of asbestos exposure. However, if people are careful, we can reduce the risk in the future. It can't be overstated how important it is that all tradies, like plumbers and electricians, are aware of the risks of asbestos exposure on building sites and in construction work. This starts with knowing what to look for and understanding where asbestos-containing material might be found. For workplaces in buildings built before 2004, management or people in control of them must keep an asbestos register. This is a document which lists all identified or assumed asbestos in a workplace. It also states what condition the asbestos is in. This should be looked at before starting any building work, including maintenance and minor alterations, to ensure it remains undisturbed. At the physical location of the asbestos, its presence must be clearly indicated by labelling or signage. If you're a tradie, it's likely that you regularly come across asbestos when working on residential homes. And most residential homes aren't required to have an asbestos register, and owners or tenants may not be aware that the substance is present. So, where do you find it? It is common to find asbestos mixed with cement and compressed into materials like fibro sheeting, flat and corrugated, in walls, ceilings, roofs and fences. Partitioning in wet areas or around old fireplaces in kitchens, laundries and bathrooms. Downpipes and gutters. It's often either a hard grey material or pink, particularly in wet areas. There's also loose fill asbestos, sometimes used to insulate industrial and domestic buildings. It can be found in wall and roof cavities and under floorboards. White or bluish in colour, it's light, fluffy and easily comes apart, making it the most dangerous form of asbestos you could come across. And because of its insulating properties, asbestos was often used as lagging around pipes and water heaters, something for plumbers to especially look out for. Often hard to spot because it might be painted. Electricians need to take special care around electrical switchboards and meter panels. Those installed before 1990 will most likely have used asbestos as an insulator. Asbestos was also used to create a textured surface on ceilings and walls, again, often painted. The thing to look out for is a textured coating, and even then, a non-textured coating may still contain asbestos. Remember, you can't tell if a building material contains asbestos or not just by looking at it. The only way to be sure is for a sample to be tested by an accredited laboratory approved to test asbestos. And until you have test results, treat the material as asbestos. But if you're a tradie, the bottom line is this. If you have any reason at all to believe something you come across might be asbestos where you're working, stop. Don't risk it. And don't let your workmates risk it either. 
Instead, if you see something, say something to your boss or someone else in charge. Or talk to WorkSafe or your union representative. Remember, while all asbestos is hazardous, it's when it is flaky, powdery, or can be broken up easily with your fingers that you're most at risk of being exposed to its fibres. But this doesn't mean it's all good if the asbestos is held together, like it's contained in cement sheets or fibro. It can be hazardous when damaged or disturbed through the use of power tools, such as electric drills, angle grinders, circular saws and electric sanders, and high-pressure water blasters or compressed air. There are strict rules about the control, management and disposal of asbestos. If you're a worker in a workplace that contains asbestos and think it is causing harm, you should tell your employer or health and safety representative. If this doesn't resolve the situation, contact the work health and safety regulator in your state or territory. If you think your work has disturbed asbestos, stop what you are doing and let your employer or health and safety rep know. If you do find asbestos, it has to be managed according to what the law requires. It's illegal not to. This also means that no one can pressure you to break the rules. If asbestos is likely to be disturbed as part of a demolition or refurbishment job, then it must be safely removed before the work starts. It's recommended that this is done by trained professionals. In fact, if the asbestos is loose fibre, friable, or there's more than 10 square metres of non-friable asbestos, it must be done by a licensed professional. If you're not trained in the safe handling of asbestos, don't touch it. If you are self-employed, it is your responsibility to control exposure to airborne asbestos fibres when working. If you are employed by someone, then they are responsible for complying with the law. The facts are this. Asbestos is a known cancer-causing substance. Before the ban in 2003, asbestos was used in over 3,000 common products. It is still present in millions of homes, public and commercial buildings and infrastructure. By law, you must not remove it yourself as part of your job. And in some instances, the law prohibits you from removing it unless there's a licensed removalist managing the work. So if you find asbestos during your work, tell your boss. But look, I get it. At the end of the day, it may seem a bother to not just get on with the work and drill a hole through something you suspect may or may not be asbestos. It's hot and sweaty, it'll make your boss happy, you want to get home. But it's not worth it. No job is worth your life.